This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to discuss grouping and parenting. Grouping and parenting allows you to organize objects in such a way that you can move them or rotate them or scale them as a single unit. Now, you can do that with Shift Select also, but you have a slightly different result. For example, in this scene, I have three primitive spheres. You can see that those spheres are listed in the outliner, which is already open. Now, if I Shift Select those spheres, and go to the Rotate tool, which is already selected in this case, I can rotate them all at the same time. However, when I do rotate them, they rotate like wheels. In other words, they rotate around their own central pivot point. Now, what I can do instead is group them together to get a different result. To group objects together, all you have to do is select them and choose Edit Group. Since these are already selected, I can go straight to Edit Group. So I'll click that, and now they're grouped together. One indication that they're grouped together is the fact that they're all green right now. The other is, there's a brand new group node in the outliner. It says Group 1 right here. And the group nodes are represented by tiny trapezoidal shape icons. Now the spheres are no longer visible at this point. They're still there, they're just hidden. They're actually children of that group. In other words, they're underneath that group. There's a little plus sign beside the group, which I can click. If I click that, it reveals the group's children. And in fact, the children are the three spheres. And you'll see it's a bit of a outline tree right here. You can see the group is at the top, and the spheres are below and indented. The spheres are children in this case, and the group is the parent. So the parent is above the children. And what this is is a hierarchy. Now, you might remember when we brought up the hypergraph window before, we brought it up in the hierarchy mode. Both these windows, the outliner and the hypergraph, are able to show hierarchies. And hierarchies are simply structures where, again, something is the parent, and then one or more things might be the children. What does that mean? Well, it means the group controls the children. Whatever is on top controls whatever is below. Now, in this case, the group node is the one that's selected. It's selected, and I can tell that because all the children are green and because the group node itself has a blue bar on it. So when the group node's selected, if I apply a transformation, the entire group moves at one time. So for instance, the Move tool moves them all at one time. The Rotate tool, however, is going to work differently than you would expect by Shift Selecting. Now when I rotate as a group, they all rotate as if they're all glued together in a line. That's because I'm rotating the group node itself. I'm not rotating the individual spheres. In fact, if I go down and select one of the spheres, like P-Sphere 1, you see that it still has its original pivot, and I can rotate it by itself. That's a great thing about hierarchies. You can select any item within the hierarchy, like Sphere 1 or Sphere 2 or Sphere 3, and each one of those items in the hierarchy retains its own pivot. So there's a pivot for Sphere 3, a pivot for Sphere 2, a pivot for Sphere 1, and yet the group has its own pivot too. So that's why, in fact, that when I rotate the group node, it has its own pivot, which happens to be right here. When I rotate the group, they all rotate together. So the thing to remember with the hierarchy is each node of the hierarchy has its own pivot. Each node of the hierarchy can be transformed separately. Now, when you do transform a group node, all the children follow automatically. So in other words, if I rotate the group one node, the children inherit that motion. Now, we'll talk more about this as we go through the various videos. And this comes into play as we model and as we animate. So you'll have a chance to practice this more as we go. Now, once you've grouped something together, you can always ungroup it. You can go back up to Edit, Ungroup. And when you do an ungroup, the group node goes away. So you see the group node is gone, but the spheres are left. So the children are pulled out of the group hierarchy and placed by themselves into the scene. Now, wherever I ungroup, that's where the spheres are left. In other words, I rotate the spheres somewhat as a group, and then I ungroup them. So they're not at the original position. They're just dropped right at that point. 
So you have to be aware of when you ungroup because the uh, children will be left where they're sitting in the scene. Now let's go back and group them again. I want to talk about the pivot a little bit more because you do have a pivot for the group node. There's a way to determine where that is. So I'll go back up to Edit, Group. Now you see that the group node selected and the pivot's at 0, 0, 0. That's the default position the pivot is placed at 0, 0, 0 in world space. In other words, 0, 0, 0 in the 3D space. It's not going to be the center of any particular sphere. By default, it's just at that point on the grid, 0, 0, 0. So when I rotate them now, that's why they have a kind of a wobbly look as they rotate. Now you can choose where the pivot is. In fact, the group tool has an option for that. So what I'll do is I'll go back to ungroup to undo the group. And now I'll go back to edit group one more time. However, this time I'm going to go to the option box on group. So option box. Here are the options for the group. Now by default, the group pivot is set to origin. And the origin is another name for the 0, 0, 0 point. So if I say origin, that's a 0, 0, 0 point in 3D space. However, you can also choose center. If you choose center, the pivot for the group is placed at the volumetric center of all the objects. So let's try that. We'll try center. And so you see the center pivot point is in the center of that entire cluster of objects. Where the volumetric center is, that's where the pivot is. So now when I rotate this, they rotate around that central point. Now that may or may not be good. Now the pivot winds up in a place that's not useful. You can use that trick of moving the pivot, which we discussed before. If you want to move the pivot, you can press the insert key on your keyboard. When you press the insert key, you go into that special pivot mode. And at that point, you can click drag that pivot and place it wherever you want it. For instance, I could put it in the center of this first sphere. When I press insert again, you get back to the rotation tool or whatever transform tool you have. So now when I rotate, they rotate around that first sphere where I place the pivot. If you want to be more accurate, you can place the pivot with the grid snap. So I can press the insert key one more time, go into the pivot mode, then go up to the top and click the snap to grid button so it turns gray. And now when I click drag the pivot, it snaps to the grid. So if you want to be more precise, that's a way to do it is to use a snap. But you can put the pivot wherever you want it. In fact, you can put it outside the geometry completely. So may I want the pivot there. I'll turn off the snap button, press insert again on the keyboard, and now I can rotate from that point. So the thing to remember is you do not have to live with where the pivot is placed for you by the group node. Now I'm going to ungroup these so we can talk about parents. So edit ungroup. Now, as I mentioned, when you do group something, the children, which are the spheres, wind up underneath the parent, which is a group node. You can also do a parent directly. Now, when you do group, it creates that group node. And the group node has no geometry. It's simply a transform node that's at the top of the hierarchy. However, you can also do something called parent. For instance, if I deselect all these, maybe I want to make this sphere the child of this sphere. In other words, this will become the child and this will become the parent. I can do that with the Edit Parent tool. And the way that works is I pick the child, then pick the parent, go up to Edit, and choose Edit Parent. What happens is the child is placed underneath the parent. In other words, the first thing I select is placed underneath the second thing I select. If I look in the Outliner, indeed the first sphere, which is this, is at the very top. Click the plus mark, then you can see that the second sphere is indeed underneath the first sphere. So sphere two is a child of sphere one. Sphere one is the parent. Again, the parent is on top, the child is below. Now you notice there is no group node here. So parent, as opposed to group, allows you to place one object underneath another in the hierarchy without having to have a separate group node. Now if I rotate at this point, Let's say I pick the parent, the p-sphere 1, and I rotate like this, it rotates like a planet. In other words, the second sphere rotates around the first sphere as if it was a moon. However, I can still go to p-sphere 2, and it still has its own personal pivot and rotation. So I want to rotate the moon, for instance, on its own. I could rotate p-sphere 2, 
But if I wanted to rotate the entire thing as if the entire moon is rotating around the planet, I can pick P sphere one and rotate that. You can see you can get a much more interesting result when you group or parent as opposed to simply shift selecting. Shift selecting still comes in handy, say when you're modeling, but for more complex motion, often you'll want to create a hierarchy. And to create a hierarchy, you can create a group or a parent. 